Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is Alan Evans. Alan is VP of Marketing at Samplify. Uh, welcome, Alan. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate you coming on the show today. And uh, I understand that you have uh, some slides for us about Samplify's Prism FP product. Do you want to go through those? Terrific, yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Samplify's uh, Prism FP is a targeted high-performance computing applications, and what we do is, is actually accelerate uh, the applications that rely on, on very large uh, floating-point data sets. So let me go through this. First, a little background on Samplify. Um, we are a startup company based in Santa Clara. Uh, we have a long history in uh, compression technology. Um, uh, and are uh, active in many markets. We're a venture-backed company with $22.5 uh, million in VC backing, as well as backing from strategic investors, including IDT and Schlumberger. Uh, we're about 21 employees. So many people are, are familiar with compression technology, and particularly text compression using uh, Lempel Ziv, uh, technologies uh, which uh, are good at, at compressing ASCII characters. Uh, but Samplify um, last decade introduced uh, integer compression technology which uh, works on just about any type of uh, signal that originates in the analog domain. And this works across uh, a wide range of application areas um, as we'll see. Uh, and we provide both uh, lossless modes as well as near lossless modes where the user can control either the compression ratio or the quality of the output of compression. So what we're introducing now is an extension of this technology to where we're compressing not just integer data types, but now also floating point data types. And all the same benefits um, of our integer compression still apply, i.e., we have the lossless modes and, and the near lossless modes where the user can control uh, compression ratio and quality. And really, with floating point compression, this takes us out of the data acquisition side of these uh, systems and puts us into the data center and the data processing side. And we'll go into that in some more detail. So if you look at high performance computing applications, the compute power that um, can be applied to these problems um, is something that, that grows with Moore's Law. Um, and you know, with every successive process technology, you can double the number of cores you put on one die. Uh, so the clock speeds increase. So basically, the performance aspect of the processors used in high-performance computing are, are doubling every 18 months with Moore's Law. Unfortunately, the interface technology is not. It's either limited by uh, mixed signal uh, characteristics, which always lag um, pure digital on these processes. Uh, so the memory bandwidth is uh, increasing at a slower rate than uh, the processing power. And similarly, the memory width is, um, is uh, increasing in slow rate because that's constrained by just mechanical packaging aspects of you know, how many pins can you put on one package. And GPUs already have you know, 384 bit wide memory, and that's you know, in packages over you know, 1,000 balls on an array. So that's creating this gap between the performance uh, capable on these systems versus the, the interface bandwidth uh, to get the data in and out. And that's that gap that Amplify is trying to address now with our floating point compression technology. So what does it do? It, it operates on any data type, uh, so both integer and floating point. It's a low software overhead, so very few assembly instructions per data element uh, on one core of an Intel CPU can run at over 100 mega floats per second or 
400 megabytes per second. Uh, and we do have a truly lossless mode. So we, the, the results of your algorithm, your high performance computing algorithm, are mathematically identical uh, to what you had um, before compression. And basically it can be compiled into the application and be you know, completely transparent. But we also provide a migration path to higher performance uh, compression modes with our near lossless results, um, which can still achieve mathematically equivalent results by letting the HPC user control the amount of precision they maintain in their data and in their intermediate results. Uh, we do make this available in software form at the Linux library uh, for Intel-based uh, platforms. And it's uh, multiprocessor ready. Uh, and it's scalable. It's, uh, it's thread safe. And so it's scalable to tens of thousands of CPUs or, or GP, GPU cores. And we'll be making it available um, for OpenCL and CUDA later this year as well. So how, do, how does our compression work? Um, you know, we're, we're still in high performance computing applications really representing, uh, you know, numerical uh, uh, items. It's, you know, stress or wind flow or temperature, you know, things that are still, you know, essentially representing things in the analog domain. And those all have characteristics of, of having high peak to average ratio. So, yes, we, we use floating point to represent all of these values, and, and floating point provides almost infinite precision. But, uh, you know, those data types really don't require all of that precision all of the time and can be carried around with, with much less precision uh, most of the time. Uh, oversampling. Uh, Signals, especially signals that originate from the analog domain, can be sampled at rates that are, are much higher than the, the actual bandwidth of the signal if you were to look at it in the spectrum domain. So Samplify takes out, you know, that white space in the frequency domain. You know, and, and lastly, uh, yeah, it really comes down to, you know, what are the effective number of bits that you need uh, to carry around in the application, a, a medical imaging application. Ultimately, all of that, the results of that's going to get displayed on a on a monitor with, you know, 8-bit grayscale performance. Yeah, we're carrying floating point uh, precision around for all the intermediate results. So uh, a view on on the guts of of our compression technology. Really, on, on the feed forward path here, what we have is a lossless compression engine. So the technology is inherently lossless. We have um, uh, redundancy removers. We operate separately on the exponents and the mantissas of uh, the floating point numbers. Um, that goes into a lossless data encoder. And uh, bada bing, bada boom, you have a lossless uh, compressed output. Uh, but we also have various, our, our near lossless modes, which allow um, the user to control compression ratio or control the quality. So you can um, have essentially a fixed uh, setting to control uh, the, you know, how much precision you want to maintain. Or similarly, the compression algorithm will adapt uh, the dynamic range to meet a specific compression ratio target. So what, what is high performance computing? High performance computing is generally, uh, we consider it a class of problems where um, the, you have the problems broken down into many small elements uh, that need to be distributed over tens, hundreds, thousands of computing cores. Uh, and oftentimes the data sets for these problems uh, exceed the local memory uh, on any one of these uh, computing cores. So, for example, a um, you know a car crash simulation for um, automobile manufacturers. You know, if you have a a car that's um, you know two meters across and two meters high and five meters long, uh, and you want to have uh, uh, do stress analysis during this uh, simulation on 
elements that are, you know, one centimeter cubes, suddenly that, that explodes into um, billions of elements uh, that need to then be distributed across, you know, many, many cores to do this. Um, and so here's a typical set of uh, data files. Actually, these are all off of NVIDIA's uh, high performance computing uh, website, uh, those data sets. And for purely lossless uh, uh, compression, we can accelerate uh, the distribution of these data sets across these tens, hundreds, or, or thousands of computing cores by, you know, in some cases 35%, uh, in many cases over, you know, 300%. So, um, and you know that's really huge for the application. That means your your application you can do that many more elements in your simulation, or your simulation computes uh, or completes in a shorter amount of time. And you can always then get further acceleration by turning on the the near lossless modes and playing around with the precision you want to maintain in these intermediate results. And Sampleby has a long history. You know, we were initially funded in March of 2007. Since that time, you know, we've acquired, you know, thousands of, of data files from uh, hundreds of customers. Um, and uh, it's really, you know, in a wide range of application areas. The technology is inherently a, a horizontal market technology. And as you get into high-performance computing, what you find is a... Um, really kind of the same class of numerical methods being applied uh, to different problems. They're very solving calculus problems uh, using finite element analysis. It's just a question of, of what equation are they solving with it, whether it's a stress equation or thermodynamics or, or even a Black-Scholes model for uh, valuing derivatives. At Samplify, we make our technology available in, you know, whatever form uh, customers want to buy it. Uh, we uh, have IP that's available as, as RTL for FPGAs and ASICs, as well as software libraries. Um, we prove out our intellectual property in uh, development kits and evaluation platforms. Uh, we can productize uh, things at a module or subsystem level. And we've even developed uh, mixed signal semiconductors. Our, our first uh, semiconductor component is the 16-channel ADC that integrates our uh, compression technology with uh, 16 channels of A to D conversion. So, uh, you know, thank you for the opportunity. Just to summarize, um, our Samplify's Prism FP a floating point compression accelerates the distribution of very large data sets across tens, hundreds, thousands of computing nodes within a high performance computing environment. Uh, it's software based compression, it operates on both integer and floating point data types. Um, there's no change to the results of the application. We have a purely lossless mode, um, it's multi processor ready, it's, it's scalable and uh, uh, supported under uh, multiple OSs and, and programming environments, whether that's, you know, Linux, you know, OpenMP, OpenCL, or CUDA. So, again, thank you very much, Rich, for the opportunity uh, to present this to your well, audience. Well, I appreciate you coming on today, Alan. I, I think way back on, I think it was slide three, you talked about um, a presentation by Andy Bechtelsheim about exascale uh, computing. And... I'm wondering, uh, have you met with the customers that are exploring this as a, a means to get to these really high levels of scale? Yeah, I, I, what we we find unanimously among the uh, people using um, uh, in high performance computing space or, or looking at uh, GP, GPU uh, uh, computing uh, platforms is is the acknowledgement of this, uh, the gap between the, the CPU performance and the I.O. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're always looking for ways that they can get, how can I get more, you know, uh, 
uh, GDDR memory ne next to my GPU? How can I accelerate, um, get faster RAID drives, get the data in and out, uh, or, or distribute it amongst uh, you know different computing nodes? So then, in in terms of uh, video compression, you know, I I do a lot of video, and it seems like I'm waiting forever, always to compress a movie so I can upload it to YouTube so they can crunch it again. Um, I noticed you had video as a market. Are, are there any OEMs using your technology in video compression right now? Uh, we have um, uh, a couple of customers using our technology in imaging applications. And um, you know, as we get into this, uh, people, one of the applications, particularly along the lines of GPUs, is people start looking at uh, gaming and 3D graphics. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've actually benchmarked our technology against um, many of the texture compression schemes that are used in uh, DirectX or OpenGL. And we're um, actually we we perform very well in terms of image quality, with the benefit that you know the rendering occurs in practically in real time versus you know perhaps up to 20 minutes per image for some of the uh, DirectX uh, encoding schemes. So do you find this to be a very uh, uh, competitive market? Are there a lot of um, um, you know, uh, s startups that are trying different approaches to compression? You know, for on the floating point side, uh, actually we're, we're finding this to be a pretty greenfield for us. Uh, obviously, when you start talking about image and video type applications, uh, there's you know, a, a rich history there. Um, but uh, in terms of actually accelerating these high-performance computing applications, I think the reaction we've gotten from customers is that you know we're pretty new and, and mm -hmm, unique there. Mm -hmm. And and what's it like being a startup in this this kind of the leading edge, this HBC space? What is that like for you guys? Well, it's um, since the the deliverable we have is uh, software. Uh, that actually makes it easy for us uh, to be able to work with large companies uh, because it's, uh, uh, we can just deliver them software, they can compile it in with their application and be off and running. Um, as, it, as we look at, you know, are there ways that we can productize this um, you know, as uh, hardware blocks, you know, we'll probably seek to partner with larger yeah, companies. Yeah. That was my, my next question, I guess, is if if the listeners out there, if this technology has their ears perked up, uh, how, how would they best engage with Samplify? Well, then go to our website, uh, www.samplify.com slash HPC, uh, or uh, send an email to sales at samplify.com. Oh, terrific. Well, hey, Alan, I really appreciate you coming on the show today. This is really interesting technology, and I wish you the best with that. That's it for the Rich Report, guys. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.